Hello, everyone. Welcome to my latest blog coming to you from Brooklyn, New York. Today, I'm happy to have a whole great cast of guests with us today from Istanbul, Karen Sarhon. Thanks so much for being with us. Kenan Cruz Chile from Portugal and, and Antalya, I would say, we have Turkey and Portugal, but in Lisbon right now. And Devin Nar coming to us from Seattle, Washington. So I think we're on a pretty good time schedule. Eight in the morning, Seattle, 11 in the morning, New York. What time is it in Lisbon? Four. Four o'clock? Yeah, and Istanbul? Six. Six in the evening. Well, thanks so much for joining me for this talk that we're gonna have. I think a really interesting talk on Ladino culture or Judeo Espanol. We can get into that debate. Is it Ladino or Judeo Judeo Espanol? Um, and uh, let me go ahead and first introduce our guest. We have a star-studded lineup today. So first of all, we have Karen Sarhon. In a second, I'll explain um, where I know her from. But she is she founded and she runs the Ottoman Turkish Spartic Cultural Research Center in Istanbul, Turkey, it, um, where she works on the preservation and documentation of all aspects of Sephardic culture, where they work on such projects as an oral history project, the Mafturim project, a Ladino database, and a Judeo-Spanish-Turkish Judeo dictionary, among many other things. She's also the chief editor of the only newspaper in the world that is entirely dedicated to Ladino, El Amanecer, and also the Judeo-Spanish page of the weekly um, Jewish newspaper in Turkey, Shalom. In 2011, she was awarded the Medal of Chevalier in Arts and Letters of the French Republic. And she also is, and she also is a band member of this amazing Spartic music band, Las Pacharos Sfaradis, wow. and she has over now she has nine albums and I think one to come. Next in the lineup, we're gonna have Kenan Cruz Chile, who was born in the UK, London, into a mixed Turkish Muslim and Portuguese family. He grew up in Turkey, finished his BA in international studies at Leiden University in the Netherlands, quite uh, international as we see. <laughs> and Kenan, I can speak to not only in Turkish, but also Hebrew, Arabic, and he has also an Ottoman Turkish background. And as we're gonna see, uh, to surprise the many, Ladino. Um, he's been spent time in Jerusalem and he also works, he wrote his thesis about the politics of cultural heritage preservation in Turkey, looking at the restoration of the Idirni Grand Synagogue, something I wrote about in the past, very interesting. Um, and next year, he'll be studying at in uh, MSc in Modern Middle East Studies at Oxford University. Last up, we have, um, and that's last and not least, Devin Nar. In a second, also, I'll tell you that he was a former student of mine way back in 2004, 2005 at Washu. Devin is now the Isaac Al, Al Hadif Professor of Sephardic Studies at the University of Washington in Seattle and Associate Professor of History. As the founder and chair of UW's University of Washington's Sephardic Study Programs, NAR has initiated a massive project to digitize, digitize all known Ladino literature in the world. NAR's first book, and he has one coming up after that, is Jews, Jewish Salonika Between the Ottoman Empire and Modern Greece. And currently he's working on, quote, uh, the next book, Another Race Problem, uh, Sephardic Jews, Race and Migration in the um, American Empire. I might add that Devin is from Sephardic background himself, and he's, he's written a lot about his family's home city of Salonik or Salonika, um, which is in uh, Greece, um, once part of the, the Ottoman Empire. So thanks so much for all joining us, and thanks for getting up really early, Devin. And we're all stuck in our homes, it's during the COVID crisis. We should mention this. Hopefully this, this uh, video will go on for many more years, way long after the, the coronavirus. In fact, when we were talking about Kanan starting a program in Oxford next year, I thought, oh, I really hope that we'll be back at universities by September. So 
So let's all keep our fingers crossed. Let's also wish uh, all those that are suffering these times difficulties. Um, I know people, my students in Brooklyn, Brooklyn College has lost people, people in the Jewish community and other, of course, um, Turkish people, it's, it's hit, hit uh, Turkey hard, hitting Portugal, and it's also hit Washington hard. Um, Washington was one of the first places among all these places that it was hit hard. So uh, wishing everyone a, a recovery uh, in these very hard times and, and, and my condolences to the people that, that have lost people. Okay, Karen, let me start by this. I did a uh, few study abroad programs. And in the study abroad programs, I like to bring them to different places. I brought them to August Armenian newspaper, the LGBTs in different places. I always brought them to the Sephardic Center because I want them to hear voices that they don't usually hear. Now, what we're going to find out is that Karen also has a beautiful voice and they got to hear that also. But I wanted them to get a chance to hear about the, the Ladino culture, Ladino being the language spoken by Jews of the former Ottoman empires and other places that originally were part of the expulsion from Spain uh, in, um, in 1492 and onwards. Um, and this language has been preserved. When I went to Turkey, coming back in a second to, to many new, I remember though, one of the first thing is that when I went into one of when the neighborhoods I used to live in, and I heard Spanish. I do, heard all two women speaking what I thought was Spanish. And Buenos Dias almost starts from window to window. And I said, who are these people? Well, as an Ashkenazi Jew, I was quick to find out these people are people speaking. They're Jews and they're speaking Ladino. And every time I teach this to my students, either in the Shaping of the Modern World class, or they said they spoke the language for 500 years. Wow. How do they keep it? Well, that's a different story. I won't be able to cover everything. But I bring my students to Karen, and she is was always such a joy to bring the students to. They loved her. They learned so much about the Sephardic culture in today's in Turkey, where about 15,000 Jewish people, a very vibrant, small but vibrant Jewish community exists. Um, and needless to say, I don't, um, although people sometimes have questions, then uh, of course coexist. Uh, with with all the other Turkish people because Jews are Turkish people like uh, like like the the other Turkish. So let me start with you. Um, how has your what is your role or what is the Spartak Center? What do you do in the Spartak Center? And maybe explain some of these great projects to us. Okay, hi everyone. I hope you're all well. Sanos irezios in your homes and not going out and taking risks. Um, I've been at home for a month now, <laughs> so this is really um, very entertaining for me to, to join these things. Um, of course, the Sephardic Center is closed now, so uh, we're not going into the office, but we work as home office and we do a lot of things. Um, uh, well, let me tell you, uh, most of my time and uh, my colleague Guler's time is spent on uh, publishing this uh, newspaper that Devin was, uh, that uh, uh, Louis was talking about. This is El Amanecer. It's a monthly supplement to the Shalom newspaper. And it has 24 pages of uh, articles, stories, anything uh, that comes to mind. Um, all in Ladino. And for about two years now, we have also been uh, publishing an insert inside the uh, Alemanesser of eight pages. So that makes a total of 32 pages of um, a um, transliteration of the original Me'am Loez, uh, transliterated by our very good friend in Israel, Yehuda Sidi. And I asked him a special favor while he was doing that and asked him to uh, put in parentheses any phrase or word that uh, was not originally in Judeo-Spanish uh, to kind of put a definition or uh, mm -hmm. the meaning, etc. So that it might be because to, to be able to read Me'am Loez, you have to know uh, obviously Judeo-Spanish, 
but also uh, Greek, also Turkish, also Italian, also French, also a lot of Hebrew, a lot of the Perashiot in Hebrew. And uh, it makes it rather difficult, a difficult read. Um, so he did that, and I think it's uh, by the end of it, if if we get there, you know, um, by the end of it, it's going to be like the first real uh, good transliteration for the people to read the Me'amlo is. Can you, can you explain what the Me'amlo is? Me'amlo is, is um, a, an interpretation of the Torah and all the other books related to it. Um, actually, Eliezer Papo is doing a very nice uh, uh, kind of course every every Sunday at five o'clock uh, Turkish and Israeli time. Uh, you're you're welcome to join the Zoom, and um, it's um, it was started by a, a rabbi from Istanbul, Rav Yaakov Huli, and he wrote the Bereshit and also half of Shemot. Then he died, poor thing. And uh, it was continued by many other rabbis. And it took about nearly 200 years to finish the whole thing with all the books. So it's, a, it's an interpretation, a Sephardic interpretation of, uh, with, with a lot of uh, stories, anecdotes, uh, explaining what the customs and what the, what, what the Torah is talking about. So Perfect. It's really and just for the viewers that don't know, Judeo-Spanish was written in Hebrew characters, and as you as you stated, yes. had has many different languages where Jews exist in the different places. Whether it's words in, in in Turkish, words in Greek, and other things. How many people actually speak the Dino as a mother tongue in Turkey today? Um, and That's why you know question. who is your who is your audience for 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 the newspapers today? And and and, and how are you trying to preserve it? The language to, to I know you're doing a, a project of actually um, recording older people that speak Ladino um, as their mother tongue. Can you tell us about that a bit? Well, uh, how many people is a very difficult question because there is no census where it asks uh, you know what your religion is and and secondly, do you speak Judeo Spanish? No, but I can tell you from um, well, we have gone down now. We're not even 15,000 anymore. We've gone down to approximately 10,000 people, uh, the community. So mm -hmm. uh, there have been a lot of alias uh, recently. And um, so I would say anybody over 50, mm -hmm. let us say, uh, would be able to um, read at least El Amanecer and understand a little bit. Uh, we have a lot of people who come to our Ladino day, uh, which is, we are also the only country that does a whole day of from 11 in the morning until six at night, a whole day of activities in Ladino and everybody speaking in Ladino um, wow. that day. Yeah, we have about 400 participants each year. And we were afraid, you know, uh, as the years went by that we wouldn't get uh, so many people, but this this year and last year we got like people over forty. So that's you know the age limit is going down, which is a good thing because that's the new generation. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say anybody over fifty really. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, and and of course I would I like to add that you know Ladino is also the Ladino culture, the Sephardic culture, keeping that alive. So if, even if people aren't speaking it, it's certainly part of the Passover Seder, for example, uh, and I'm sure continuing traditions. Um, I was wanting to know if you could maybe sing something from the, 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 the Passover Seder, if that would be fine. The Seder now, uh, this year, for example, we did a Zoom Seder <laughs> with, with all the family. I mean, it's the first, year in my life that I have not spent the whole week in the kitchen preparing, uh, cooking and preparing things. Um, but still, of course, we have traditional songs and uh, I, I can, okay, we can start perfect. with- Perfect, uh, yeah, yeah, you had sent me two things and, but um, uh, which- 
Cancel yeah, yeah. So maybe start with this. Tell us just a, a bit about for the viewers that don't know what the, what what, the, what this uh, song okay. is. So when, and then when... then I'm gonna put it up. Also, I'll put it up the words when you sing it. I can put up the words to the share screen for so people can see it. Okay. So when the seder is finished, uh, or nearly finished, when we when everybody is eating and you know the the whole balagan is going on around the table. Um, it, it was it was a tradition to sing basically two songs that are usually very long because um, they require people to participate. So in fact, it is very long because everybody takes a turn in singing mm -hmm. it, in singing it, in singing it. So, quien supiense y entendiense alabar al dios creense, cuál es el uno. Uno es el criador, Baruhu Baruchemo. That's how it starts, and and uh, it's I, I it, it is um, I like that song because it's it's really nice and it it uh, kind of um, give it kind of gives voice to uh, most of the um, uh, <laughs> traditions that we have about mm -hmm. with numbers and things. So do you, you want to um, sing some of it? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, perfect, perfect. We, so yeah, perfect. Put up words and I'll start the song. Okay, so I'm gonna put, I'm, I'm gonna put share screen. Um, just bear with me for a second. Um, and we're going to. Here we go. So please. Okay. Um, <laughs> let's let's hear some. No, 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 that's the wrong one. Oh. No, no, no. Okay. No problem. No, no problem. That's gonna be for me. Sorry. Sorry. That's the tango one. That's the, the one that we're going to end with, right? Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Tech problems. No problem. Right. Here we go. Here it comes. Okay. Perfect. Because we stopped at five, 
and then went on straight to 12. So but did, you can you can imagine everybody picking up one number and and adding adding it, it on. Add on. And the other the other the other song actually that from Pesa. What we're going to do with the other song, we're going to we're going to conclude our yeah, That's that's different. The other song oh, Okay. At Pesa table is un cabretico. That's also kind of the same thing that also adds up. Uh, and and it's it's quite long. So perfect. Um, but we're not doing that today. So we're one on one last thing before we move on to Kanan. Could you tell us about the project of recording people and um, you know getting um, you know uh, nuances of the language that that have disappeared um, and trying to preserve the language? How is that going? How many people have you recorded uh, um, throughout throughout Turkey? And I imagine it goes on to Israel and other places also. Uh, well, the Ladino database project was mostly from of people in Turkey. Uh, speaking Ladino, it was a, um, a recording of the spoken uh, language today, actually. And the only criteria we were looking for was people, uh, to uh, people who spoke Ladino as their first language, as their mother tongue, or nearly as native speaker as possible. And uh, we recorded um, 63. Uh, yeah. 63 people, yeah, we have about, sorry, 63 people from Istanbul, and then a research student who helped us, uh, she did She did like 12, um, 12 people from Izmir. So we have about 80 um, hours of recorded Ladino. And wow. we are, yeah, and uh, plus with their transcriptions, Mota Mot transcriptions as well. So we are we are in the thank God stages of building a new website where we are going to put everything online so researchers can profit. You know, can that's use amazing. it. And, uh, that's and so amazing. So amazing. You, have, you will have the sound, the sound, and the transcriptions as well. So that's going to be really perfect. Nice. And so, in a second, we're going to move to Kanan, and then at the end, we're going to come back to you. We're going to hear about your band. Bit also, I want to hear about Las Pastor. Also, I want to hear the history of it. Also, and I want to get another song from you. I always come back for for, for the songs. Um, Kenan, uh, thanks so much for being with us um, from Lisbon. Uh, I met you in Turkey just two months ago. I know you go. You're a bit like me, going back and forth. But, you know, I do Istanbul, Tel Aviv, New York. You do uh, many cities, but always Turkey and Portugal as your as your base. Um, so uh, I could say bienvenidos, right? Uh, but I would be lying to think I could actually speak Latino or Spanish. But uh, tell us how you got to this. How did you get to, to studying Ladino and actually writing it? Let me, let me point out that Kanan's probably one of the youngest um, Ladino writers today. I joke that uh, Devin's son, who's about four, I think, Vidal, might be a bit younger than uh, maybe the youngest writer of Ladino also speaks Ladino at home. Um, but so, Kanan, how did you get in? How did you get involved in this? And saving, you know, you, you do many different things. You've, you've written um, in a second. I can show the the articles you wrote. Um, but it's really interesting because what I what I think stands out uh, about you, uh, you know, you you really gone and looked at the different cultural heritage of Turkey, not just Jewish, but but also Armenian, Greek, and 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 Muslim architecture, also Turkish architecture, also. Um, how did you get to this? Uh, first of all, thank you for having me. I, I'm very happy to be here and to be able to talk to you guys. Uh, I was actually thinking back yesterday, trying to remember when the first time I probably came into contact with Ladino was, and I think it was probably when I was in high school. Uh, I went to Istanbul for a holiday, term holiday, and I visited the Jewish Museum of Turkey, which at the time was uh, at its previous location. Uh, at the Zulfaris Synagogue in Karako. And it, it must have been there that I saw a copy of Shalom, the newspaper, the Turkish Jewish newspaper, which has a page in uh, in, in Ladino. And also once a month, uh, Elam Eneser, the newspaper that Karen just mentioned, comes along with it. And it just happened to be one of those months where, one of those weeks where Elam Eneser was also published. So out of curiosity, you know, I started flipping through it. And I grew up in a household that speaks Turkish and Portuguese. And my mom also speaks Spanish, spoke Spanish. And uh, I have family in Spain, so I was also very used to hearing Spanish. 
Uh, and I thought, okay, I'm going to see and try out to see how much I can understand. I assumed I'd be able to understand, you know, bits here and there. But uh, I was actually quite surprised because uh, I was able to understand essentially uh, maybe almost all of it. Um, and I especially loved, because I'm also into linguistics, I loved seeing, you know, the bits that can, that sort of overlap with modern Spanish, uh, but then also the bits that reminded me of Portuguese, uh, a lot of the phonology, some of the sounds, the zh sound, the sh sound reminded me a lot of Portuguese. Uh, yeah, maybe, liked... maybe for the people that don't know, I mean, the, the alphabet of Judeo-Spanish is different than, I mean, the fact that it was, there was in Hebrew characters, but, but um, they have different um, letters, sounds, pronunciations. Um, so yes, you understand about, but there must be many things that, that come completely new to you as a Spanish Portuguese speaker. For sure. Some things uh, that you know you, one would not recognize from Spanish, I would recognize from Portuguese or vice versa. And some things like, you know, you would just not recognize at all. Uh, but also a very interesting thing was uh, when I grew up at home, I would also very often, you know, if I would by mistake mix up two verbs in Turkish and Portuguese, I would conjugate a Turkish verb as if it were Portuguese without even noticing it, you know, subconsciously. <laughs> uh, and I realized uh, one of the things I loved in Ladino was that the same thing happens there. Uh, so many verbs, usually more, I guess, secular terms. Uh, I can give some examples like uh, like to mix in Turkish, uh, then became karishtiriar in Ladino. Uh, wow. Karen would know a lot more examples, but like Boyamak became Boyadiar. And that was something that I thought was exclusive to, you know, my household or, you know, a few mixed language households. Uh, <laughs> and I was so excited to see it like existing, you know, in, in print, in, in an actual language. Uh, so that, that got me very excited. I also loved seeing, you know, the, the, the words, the loan words that came from Turkish or from Hebrew uh, into Ladino, you know, and the way that those words came in. So more, you know, religiously characterized words from Hebrew, obviously, and then more secular words from maybe Turkish or Greek or Italian or even Arabic. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I definitely enjoyed just the linguistic aspect. Uh, and then later on, I made from that moment onwards, I made a I think it was more of an unconscious decision to every once in a while, maybe once a month, maybe more often, less often, uh, read an article either in Shalom or in El mm -hmm. Uh And I became accustomed to reading it. And eventually, you know, I started uh, when I started writing my thesis a year ago, I was doing a lot of research uh, that involved a lot of Ladino or that referenced a lot of Ladino. So at that point, I also decided to start listening to some more music uh, and a lot of Karen's music, actually, Los Pacheros Sefardis. They even have a, a concert with Cezanne Aksu, uh, which was, was very astounding to me. And I loved, I just loved hearing the songs and the, the similarities between the, you know, the cultural elements that reminded me of both of my homes in Turkey and Portugal. Uh, and eventually, you know, after graduation, I decided to take a gap year and I had lots of spare time on my hands. And I said to myself, I've been reading these articles for a long time. Maybe it's about time I try my luck at writing something. Uh, so I sat across the computer and I, you know, I did my best and I sent it in on a whim. Uh, and then a few days later, Karen actually contacted me and uh, she let me know that it was going to be published, which for me was obviously incredibly exciting. But uh, what I did then was compare the version that I had sent in with the version that was to be published. And I went back and sort of looked at what the mistakes I made were orthographically or like uh, lexically. And then I tried to make a mental note to not repeat those mistakes. And then the best way to practice, seeing as I don't uh, have much contact with any Ladino speakers, was to write again. So I mm -hmm. continued writing. I tried to write once a week or more often, less often. Uh, and since then, I think I, my first article got published in December. Since then, I've had a few more articles published, but it's been a very exciting journey because along just in those five months, I've definitely I feel that I've definitely learned uh, a lot of words and a lot of a, a lot more of, about Sephardic culture in Turkey just by not only reading but also participating by writing in the in the in for Shalom and for El uh -huh. In fact, I'm going to bring up one of your your articles. If um, yeah, right here, here's um, uh, you can see that, correct? Yeah. Yeah. The, this is about one of Kanan's uh, articles about an abandoned synagogue in Galata, which I had never known about. And what what I what I think is so fascinating about your work is is that you are you are a bringing not just the Latino, but you're bringing the history of Turkish Jews and Ottoman Jews into into uh, your own you know, mainstream with Twitter and bringing them, bringing this out. Because let me say that his articles have been published also 
um, uh, in other places in English and in Turkish and in that. So I, I think it's, 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 it's absolutely fascinating. Let's quickly move to, I, I wanted to say something that's very fun about Turkish, you know, Turkish words also. I just love, uh, and I heard Devin, when you talk to your son, you say, Ke haber, right? Uh, how's it going? Like the ne haber, naber in Turkish. So, so, and it's actually haber from, from Arabic, which is headline, but it, it's a Turkish word, haber. So that's a normal word that, that, that's in, that's in Ladino. Now that maybe bring it over to Devin quickly. And if you say Ke haber, a, that's how they were saying it in Salanik also. A, a, did the Salonokin, the Jews from Salonik, did they speak Greek or did they just speak Ottoman or Turkish and Ladino or Ladino as their mother tongue and Turkish? Um, and maybe from there, you can tell us what you're doing at University of, of Washington. You, you've really developed a program. I mean, since I met, I met Devin uh, when he was a senior at WashU. Um, he was my student in my modern Turkey class. We only had five, six people um in there and um i was lucky to have met him and we had a, we had a, a really fun class and still in contact with many of the people in that class it was it was uh it was a, a really en enjoyable the first time i was teaching in the united states um modern turkey so i was i was very excited it was 2005 was such a year also i mean things were really i would say looking up then um so uh, tell us a little about what's a bit different than the saloniki saloniki jews um, in compared to Istanbul, and what you're doing at um, a few minutes of what you're doing at at, at, Wash, at University of Washington, not WashU, University of Washington. Yeah, great. Well, thank you, Louis. It's really a, a pleasure to to join you and uh, and your other guests. I'm I'm very happy to be here. And uh, you know, your class was very influential. I mean, obviously, it helped you know set me on my trajectory. So I'm very grateful for uh, uh, for your that you did a good job with that first class. Let's just say that. <laughs> Although you made us watch At, and it was very depressing. Yeah, it's called, a movie called The Horse. Few people have seen it. Yeah. It's it's probably one of the most depressing films ever. You know, they uh, they even say in Turkish Turk film gibi, right? I Meaning it's like it kills you, hits you, or turns it around. And that movie was like that. One of our students, she didn't leave her dorms for 24 hours after that. I I, I had heard. So <laughs> yes, <laughs> I remember that well. Um, in terms of uh, of Salonika. I mean, yeah, it, we're, it sort of depends on when we're talking and sort of which classes we're speaking about. But I think generally, Jews in Salonika, their primary language was uh, was uh, what we call Ladino. I mean, you know, what, oftentimes there you can see references to being called Judesmo or Judio or Espanol or Judeo Espanol. But that was that was the that was the language that was spoken. And uh, I found an article from 1900 that said that um, in one of the Ladino newspapers in Salonika that said a quarter of uh, a quarter of the Jews spoke Turkish. And mm -hmm. uh, really only after uh, the city becomes part of Greece that um, Jews begin to speak uh, Greek. Meanwhile, they're also speaking, uh, learning French, uh, especially thanks to the Alliance Israelite Universelle some Italian and some other languages. So it was still a very polyglot um, kind of environment. And of course, as you hinted at, the, the different cities and different regions had their own variations of Ladino. So there are certain expressions and phrases and, and words that you find in Salonika that you don't necessarily find in Istanbul or, um, or vice versa. So you have that kind of uh, rich uh, dialectology that sort of is, 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 is on its way out uh, in many ways, but one of them, I mean, I remember my, my, my nono, my, my grandfather from, uh, from Salonika and some of, they sometimes preserve the, this F sound that exists uh, in the Salonikan, some of the Salonikan dialects. So sometimes people say Fijo rather than Ijo, Fijo mio, like my, my boy, my son, mm. uh, just one, one small example. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. But uh, in terms of what we're doing at Seattle, you know, when I arrived there, people in the community, in the Sephardic community, Seattle is home to one of the largest Sephardic communities in the United States um, of Ottoman origin and of Ladino speaking origin. And when people found out that I spoke Ladino and was interested in Ladino, they started bringing me their books and their family documents, wow. asking me to interpret them, to translate them. And it was really fascinating and uh, enriching experience. And I wondered what would happen if we tried to systematize 
the uh, trying to, to, to access and to centralize all these materials. And so we, we set up a program to uh, invite people to come with their books and documents, postcards, many different kinds of things. And a lot of the people had retained these documents or books over the generations. I mean, people had books in their basements, in their closets, you know, from, the, from the 18th century, from, from 18th century Istanbul, from Salonika, let alone, you know, 19th and 20th century newspapers, magazines. And uh, we wondered, well, let's, this material is not really accessible easily or readily anywhere in the world right now, and certainly not online. What if we try to uh, digitize these materials? Because while there is wonderful work going at, on in, in Istanbul with El Amanasar and elsewhere, I was also very interested in, in trying to provide people with access to the original text in the Hebrew, uh, in the Hebrew script, in which almost all of these texts that we were getting in Seattle were. Uh, you know, in some ways, it's kind of like the fate of Turkish. You have all of these texts in uh, Osmanlıca that suddenly one generation wakes up one day and they cannot access the texts of their ancestors and something similar happened in the case of Ladino in which you have four or five hundred years. Ladino and, and Yiddish, we have to say that the two yeah. largest, um, you know, languages of, of the Jewish world and, and Arabic for that fact, Judeo-Arabic yeah. also. Uh, yeah. I was in an Iraqi Seder and it literally was in Judeo-Arabic, Arabic and Hebrew characters um, yes. that doesn't exist today. Absolutely. Yeah. And so but trying to bring that material forward yeah here here she's putting up this is great these are these are the rashi characters of the it's a hebrew alphabet in rashi characters and this is what they use for for judeo spanish this is the the characters they use wow yeah. this if is if i this could is, just add a comment on that chart karen i don't know if you know but brian berman you know from whom the solitreo comes from he was my roommate in college yes. and th those solitreo letters are from my family letters wow yeah, okay. they're 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 from my family letters. Yeah. Oh, that's 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 so fast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tell me how what you get students now. I mean, Anand is going on to study Middle East studies, and I'm sure he's going to continue with his Hebrew, Arabic, and and Ladino um, in some form or other. But what is it like at University of Washington? You're getting uh, students doing this, studying the uh, the history of Sephardic Jews, learning Ladino right now. Yeah, I mean, it's it's been a really rich and vibrant experience. We get a lot of students from many different family backgrounds, many different disciplinary backgrounds. I like to think of Sephardic studies in parallel to the Ladino language, that it kind of forms a, a cultural cupri, a kind of a bridge mm -hmm. that links uh, people across disciplines. So we had a scholar come and teach Ladino a few years ago, and the deans were like, you better get at least you know 10 students in this class. Don't embarrass me. And uh, we had 35 students taking uh, introductory Ladino, which was oh. more than we get for Hebrew. By a, yeah. a, and it was really rich because people came from uh, Jewish studies, they came from Middle East studies, they came from the Spanish and Portuguese department, and the professor put some expressions on the board. And uh, uh, just like Kanan was mentioning, it, none of them on their own could understand the particular expressions that he presented, but it was only when the person who knew the Hebrew characters began to sound it out and the person who knew Spanish began to interpret it, and the person who knew Turkish or who knew Arabic could then put the pieces together. And I think that's also reflected uh, that interest in uh, among, among my graduate students as well. You know, I have a number of graduate students working on wonderful projects about Armenian Jewish relations in the Ottoman Empire. I had a student write about uh, uh, the last generation of Ladino speakers um, in Seattle, and uh, just some really, uh, uh, one, one student now who's from Izmir is writing about the Jewish community of Izmir and wrote a wonderful chapter of a dissertation about the uh, cholera in, uh, in Izmir, which unfortunately is too timely. Um, but it's, uh, it's, it's a really wonderful uh, experience bringing together many different kinds of, uh, of students and communities you know, we also do International Ladino Day as well. And when we are fortunate to get around 400 people, it's just an evening program, but only maybe a quarter of the people or, or less are of Sephardic background. The people who show up are people who are interested in, uh, in the Mediterranean world. They're interested in the Middle East. They're interested in Turkey. Um, they're interested in the Spanish speaking world. And there's sort of some, there's a way for people to connect uh, all across those different kinds of uh, of cultural boundaries and universes. Wow, this, this is this is uh, fascinating. Um, thanks so much, Devin. Um, thanks to all of you. This has been fascinating. 
Um, before we go, we're going to hear one more song, but does anyone have anything else to add? I mean, this could, we could go on for more and more and maybe we could do something in the future, but um, anything else? If not, we can hear Karen sing a new song of hers. Tell us a bit about your band because it's, it really is, I think the first time, um, two decades ago, I came to Turkey and little did I know when I went there um, that this would become my second home and continues to be my, you know, one of my homes. Um, and I bought CDs and I don't think I was old enough for the cassettes. I mean, old, I am old enough for cassettes, but I got the, the CD period. But, and now I'm on the YouTube. So often I, I click YouTube and I'll share some links. And yes, I know the one with you in Cezanne Oxo, I showed it to my students where Cezanne Oxo also sings the Hadodi, which uh, was actually written and the, the uh, hymn. I just thought it was fascinating. So tell us about your band and then let's close with hearing uh, one more song from you. Well, uh, at the beginning, all members of, uh, that was the beginning was 1978. So that's quite wow. a long time ago. Um, we were all in the Jewish youth club uh, called Dostu Kyurtu. And uh, somehow, uh, because we all acted in a musical called Kula, which we've acted along the years, uh, it has re been repeated, it's, it's become a classic uh, play of the Turkish Jewish community. We got interested in the music. And uh, at that particular time, there were a lot of Western uh, musicologists, ethnomusicologists from the States, from Europe, from Israel, who, who came to collect songs, to, to collect whatever there was mm -hmm. left, actually, because it, that was the time when things kind of slow, were slowly disappearing. So um, we founded our group, Izet Bana and I, and then later on, the Hubesh brothers joined. And, uh, but for the last coming of eight, nine years, we've been um, uh, performing with professional musicians. And uh, so Izet and I have been friends for more than 44, 44 and years. And let me give a plug for Izet. Um, as it's full of energy as, as you are. I mean, the yeah, two I'm of you together is singing Izet is just, <laughs> fantastic on on stage i've seen him before on stage also and, and full of you life. Know, but he's got the patience of a saint because he's got a uh, children's choir called estrikas de Istanbul, and children of age 8 to 14 and he's got a big choir and they are very successful and he teaches them of course the songs and it's wonderful he also has a women's choir which requires also a lot of patience uh, and it's called Ness uh, because, well, it's miracle because people got interested, uh, young people, older people, whatever, got interested in the music and he's teaching them. Um, so then a few years ago, um, I was uh, in a conference in Brazil and there my very good friend from Argentina, Liliana Benveniste, sang a, um, a variation, a Judeo-Spanish uh, variation of the famous Argentinian tango, Caminito, you know, <clears throat> and she, she called it Calejica. So, so then suddenly I thought, wow, I'm sure we have a lot of tangos on our side of the world as well, not just Argentinian tangos. So when I came back, I was all, you know, enthusiastic and I wrote to all my friends <clears throat> around the world, the musicologists and everything, to see if we had tangos in this part of the world, because I know that in Turkey, tangos were very popular beginning of the last century. And then I received a lot of material. And uh, also, uh, uh, you know, our um, tradition is that if we like a melody and we would like to make it ours, we write Judeo-Spanish lyrics and it becomes Sephardic. So um, I wanted the first ever Turkish tango to be on the CD, but of course it had to become Sephardic. So I wrote the lyrics and it got into the CD. And the, but the song that I'm going to sing now uh, was written by a student of mine, a very, very talented student of mine, Alper Almelek. Uh, I wrote the lyrics and it's called Estambol Mi Amor 
And uh, uh, you can imagine what it's about. It's my, about my love for Istanbul. But um, this also uh, is part of the new songs that we also put uh, into the CD. And um, if you like to hear it, put up the words. It's Perfect. called- And I think on this one, we won't put up the words because we, we like to concentrate and also seeing you sing. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> the new CD is called uh, Tango Sefaradis del Dip del Baul, meaning there were some inedited um, tangos as well, because in at the beginning of last century, there were two very, very important Jewish uh, musicians in Salonika uh, called Gazos, Sadik and Gazos. And uh, they, their job was to entertain people, but they also took melodies, popular melodies of the time and uh, wrote Judeo-Spanish lyrics on them. And they liked to uh, make the frivolous songs into kind of more, um, uh, let's, how can I say, uh, more conservative with happy ends. Like if there's a kind of a girl who is meneada, as, as we call them in, in, <laughs> in Judeo-Spanish, finally she gets married to the guy she's in love with, you know, happy ending things. Um, so there are, there are four songs like that, uh, which we found and our uh, good friends from uh, Tel Aviv sent them to us. And um, so here we go. Here's the, the song, Estambol Mi Amor. Estambul de siete montes, nos mira de sus árboles, la historia y sus flores, un cante de sus amores. Semos entornados por la mar, no podemos vivir sin nada. El bosque y las islas. Una magia muy especial. Bebe un chai en el vapor, que se va por el bosco. Haceremos que el ponte en el aire de Estambul. Estambul visita, llena de felicidad. Una muralla vida, Estambul, mi amor. Estambul de siete montes, nos mira de sus árboles, la historia y sus flores, un cante de sus amores. Semos entornados por la mar, no podemos vivir sin nada. El bosque y las islas. Una magia muy especial. Bebe un chai en el vapor, que se va por el bosco. Haceremos que el ponte en el aire de Estambul. Estambul, mi cita, llena de felicidad. Un amor a eternidad. Estambul, mi amor. Estambul vivo, Estambul lleno. Estambul lucio. Estambul, mi amor, Estambul vivo, Estambul lleno, Estambul lucio, Estambul, mi amor. Estambul vivo, Estambul lleno, Estambul lucio, Estambul, mi amor. Thank you. That was amazing. And now people understand why I always bring my students back to Karen. <laughs> and now you understand why when the first blogs I said I would have video blogs, I would have Karen as a guest. 
because it gives me chills and I love it. And I can't wait to get this album. And we're going to share the information on my blog. Send um, maybe send just a link to me and I'll put it up on my, my blog where they can just purchase it. And I'm also going to uh, um, put up the University of Washington's information and other links that people might be interested in. And um, I want to thank each and every one of you for such a really beautiful uh, hour. Um, and it's the whole point was this is going to be a Pesach surprise, um, not just for the Jewish viewers, but everyone that's celebrating Easter. And we have Ramadan coming right up right now. And to give us a little happiness in these times that we're going through. So Karen, from my, all my heart, thanks so much. Thank Kenan, thanks so much for keep writing the Dino, keep I publishing will. And Devin, keep doing your work and bringing new people and doing these um, international Sephardic days, Ladino days, Judeo-Spanish. We didn't even get into that question of Judeo-Spanish versus Ladino. We're going to have to end now. Thanks so much. And um, 